Aloha! Top of the morning, friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? On this channel, we upload beautifully edited cinematic masterpieces once a week. This video is uncut. And in today's uncut video, I am opening up a box that has a snake in it. This box is from my buddy Riley's Reptiles. Riley, at Riley's Reptiles. Link in the description or probably in the description of this video or whatever. <laughs> then go check out his channel. He's uh, very knowledgeable about really all things reptile, but specifically carpet pythons, which is what is in this box. I'm gonna take it out and talk about it and we'll see what's up. I'm gonna do it one-handed and I'm Sorry about that. I, I accidentally stopped filming like one so now there's a cut. Dang it. I hit it with my hand on accident. Okay, so there's a there's there there and there if you want to send me a snake and you guys ever get the wild hair of your butt and you want to send a snake to me, just send it right on over here and I'll I'll get it. <laughs> Thank you, Riley, for sending this thing, man. We've been talking about sending this snake for a long time. Or me meeting somewhere and we just he lives way north in California. I'm way down here, so um here it is. Here it is. Let's open it up. Uh, again, one-handed means I'm probably going to mess up again and hang up on the video. <laughs> hang up on the video, get it? Because I'm filming with my phone. All right, knife. Let's you and me do some stuff here, like cut open this box without cutting myself or the snake or hanging up on these lovely folks that are watching the video again. Oh my gosh, this is much harder than I thought it was going to be. I probably should have brought my little tripod for my camera. But no, I'm not that smart. Okay. Okay, don't. All right, I'm not gonna promise that that's the last time I hung up with you guys on this video, but it might be. We'll find out. Okay, let's take a look at the snake. So this snake in here is a, uh, it's a tiger. It's a tiger. Uh, what's labeled 66% possible hit axanthic, as you can see on the paperwork there. Got some nice records, got some nice stickers. Riley's Reptiles, check them out on Instagram too. Um, and, He's got all the feeding schedules here. See, so this, this sucker hatched back in May. He's been trying to get them to me probably since, uh, I don't know, probably since some other thing over here. Oh, May of 2022. Holy poop sticks, it's 2023. He's been trying to give me this snake for a lot longer than I realized. Um, thanks, Riley, for holding on to him for me for so long. I'm probably going to do a thing which is uh you know breed this to my other coastal carpet python that i got from my buddy travis johnson so many years ago at the u.s arc auction that he held at his house at the southwest carpet fest go ahead and scan that thing right there um so that you can learn more about u.s arc and how you can be in the know scan that sucker right there hopefully there's not too much of a fold in it you know what? i'm gonna flatten it out scan it go ahead if you're watching on your TV, scan that sucker right there so you can be in the know, okay? That, scan it. Scan it, please. Thank you. So the cool thing about axanthic in carpet pythons is that there's been this debate as to whether or not it's an incomplete dominant trait or a recessive trait. And there's a group of folks, including Riley, who are collecting shed samples so they can send them over to our buddy Ben Morrill at Rare Genetics Incorporated so they can put it to rest once and for all, whether it's incomplete dominant or whether it's simple recessive trait. And that brings up an interesting thing to me is like, how do you determine that? I mean, because phenotypically is usually how we determine it. Like if, if something's incomplete dominant, then it's heterozygous form has some kind of change, such as in a pastel ball python. And then the homozygous form has even more of a change, such as in the super pastel or the homo homozygous uh, version of a pastel ball python. And then you look at something like pied, um, where, you know, it's considered sample recessive. And, uh, but the, you know, a lot of times there's markers on the belly, although those aren't 100% necessarily accurate, it's still subtle. And so what I'm thinking is with carpet pythons that axanthic is a fairly subtle trait. Uh, so it's like, well, I wonder, you know, I wonder is it or is it not? So my question is like, how do you figure that out genotypically um, versus phenotypically? And I guess Ben Morrill would be the person to have that conversation with and will probably be able to answer the questions for me that I'm having for myself right now. But I'm gonna try and set this camera down. Um, in a way that allows me to film this snake. Here, you know what? I'm just gonna put the camera right here. Put it on the wide angle, bank. We have a very unflattering view of my face. 
from the angle, shooting directly up. Ladies, don't do that at home. Um, I'm gonna take the little tape off here and get this little snakey out the bag. Carpa pythons, if you don't know, start out extremely tiny. This is, a, again, Morelia spilota mcdowelli, or mcdowelli, if you wanna say Latin stuff. Um, and they are very cool snakes. Carpa pythons amaze me at how small they start out as babies and then how big they can get as adults, but they start out extremely tiny. Oh, see, this guy is clearly, okay, so I'm, I'm looking at this dude and I'm thinking, you know, we're saying 66% pos het, which means that, you know, using the simple recessive traits, we're talking about an animal that was paired with uh, two animals that would have been considered heterozygous, I guess, for uh, azanthic to get a 66% possible het. But I'm just looking at this dude like right out the bag. I'm gonna go ahead and say that 